I think for all the critters in North America, and I, I've been I've been lucky in, in my career that I've had some opportunities to travel all over the country into Canada, Mexico, Argentina, and New Zealand. I, I've been to a lot of places, hunted for a lot of different things. Uh, people can give as much credit to a big white-tailed buck as they want, but I, I don't think there's anything day in and out that is any more intelligent and, and any tougher to match wits with than a big coyote. They're, just, they're smart, they figure things out, but they do have their weaknesses. And so I remember catching that first coat, and, and to me, you know, creating a, a trap, you know, picking the location, creating the setup, and, and getting an animal that I know is that intelligent to step on a little bitty spot um, because I tricked him basically, it's pretty, it's pretty rewarding. So I went out uh, yesterday, I've got a buddy of mine that's got a farm, I don't know, 10 miles or so from here. And he, uh, you know, intensive property manager, big time deer hunter, turkey hunter, uh, waterfowl hunter, you name it. He's, he's got food plots and, uh, and, and he's got a, a kind of a predator problem. He's had a lot of coyotes on the trail camera this year, a lot of bobcats, a lot of raccoons. And he had mentioned that to me. I said, you know, I'm, I'm kind of into trapping, so we'll come over there and give it a try after deer season goes out if you want us to. We'll make some wax dirt. I don't see a mink either. I went and set uh, about 30 traps yesterday. Combination of uh, number two Bridger uh, dogless traps. That's what I use for my predators. Then some dog proof raccoon traps, a couple of body grips. Just kind of a mix of stuff. Like I said, I think I had about 30 sets out there. But I've set a lot of them through pretty thick ice, like a quarter inch of ice. I was able to get my traps in the ground, but I wasn't able to blend them as well and get them as hidden as I would have liked. So we had a challenge uh, right out of the gate. Um, this morning we, we got off to a slow start. And so I thought you were bringing all the good luck today. <laughs> We'd gone through pretty much every set in the line. I knew we were getting down to about the last two traps. Even our raccoon traps were empty, which usually when those are empty, you, you can tell it's gonna be a pretty tough morning. We've been struggling to catch raccoons more than, uh, more than the coyotes. And uh, it's kind of unusual. Finally, uh, we, we sort of came around a curve. We saw a bunch of deer standing there and they were looking and, and we even made the comment that like, well, there's obviously nothing in that trap. All the deer are standing around there looking. Hey, yep, nice bobcat. That's a pretty one too. Sorry. All right, be quiet. Oh, you can get, I just don't get inside that catch circle. Those bobcats will eat you up. <laughs> Small one. It's pretty. You gotta watch with a bobcat. You can see the edge of that catch circle and they will lunge at you. I'll shoot them with just a solid standard velocity, 22, and uh, keeps from, from tearing your fur all up. Sometimes I'll shoot them with a 17 HMR with a full metal jacket. One of the big parts of trapping that, that I found difficult when we first started was actually seeing an animal caught in a trap. Um, you know, I've hunted a lot of things and seen a lot of things, but to actually see something caught in a trap and know that, that it can't get away, that, that's kind of a hard thing when, when you first see it. However, you know, seeing what trapping has done for our farm and seeing what it's done for our turkey population and our deer population and things like that, it, it, it's reassuring that we are doing the right thing. Trapping is one of those things that um, there, there's not a lot of money in the fur market right now. You can sell them and, and make a little bit off of it, but it's not, it's not gonna cover your fuel to go and do it. And uh, you know, we obviously don't, don't trap for the money angle of it we, we got into it for the for the land management angle of it for you know getting some of the predators off the landscape that are you know uh, eating up turkey nests you know eating fawns things like that one of the the pleasantly surprising aspects of it to me anyway is has actually become you know how much i actually appreciate the predators um they do have a role on the landscape and i always tell ants uh, and, and it's something that I like to stress to him, you know, buddy, we're not, 
We're not trying to get rid of all the coyotes. We're not trying to kill all the bobcats or kill all the foxes. I, I don't want them gone. Like I, I like knowing they're here. I think it's something that, that, you know, it's kind of the natural progression of being a trapper is that, that respect and appreciation for the critters. Half of what, you know, why, why America was, you know, was, was colonized and, and was, was for the fur trade. And it's just neat to kind of think about that history. And, uh, you know, people have always utilized fur and I, I'm, I think it's kind of cool that, that we utilize it too. Yeah, it's a small cat. Not tiny. I mean, he's a he's grown. You see, that's what you want. It's a full pad catch right there behind that. And you want to put our cat in the machine. So when I go to do a remake, trap my favorite trap, there's a lot of different ones, um, but I like a Bridger number two dogless for my predator trapping. It's got a big pan on it. There's a lot of room for them to step on and, uh, and it's just a good solid trap. Um, they're not the most expensive trap out there, but they're kind of kind of mid-priced and you can buy them by the case and they're pretty well tuned up. They're night latched and, uh, and ready to go out of the box. But once I catch something, I will, before I start doing it, I'll, I'll kind of try to clean the springs and stuff out a little bit. And then I'll usually load it and snap it just to get some of the gunk out of it a little bit. And so that's what I'm gonna do here. A lot of guys can cock these with their hands. Uh, it's a little bit easier to cock them with your feet and you don't get snapped as bad. So um, that one's firing pretty good. This is just a groundhog trapping hammer. It's got the little trowel on it and uh, the little deal where you can dig out a dirt hole, but I'm just gonna clean this back out. You can see as I'm digging down in there, <coughs> that's my wax dirt. And that's what'll, uh, we'll cook some of that later and show how it's made, but that's what keeps these traps firing when it's real wet like this and, and freezing and thawing and stuff. That wax dirt will keep them working. You hear that little click, that's your night latch. That's how you know your trap pan's level and it's ready to go. <clears throat> and when I'm digging my, my setups, I always anchor my, my earth anchor kind of offset from my dirt hole a little bit. And whenever I dig it out, I dig actually a little trench right up here and that just gives me room to ball that chain up and put some dirt on top of it that way it's not getting in the way of the trap or the springs so put a little dirt down over that pack it in good open my jaws up the biggest thing and this was the biggest learning curve and i'm i'm definitely not an expert but the biggest learning curve that i had to overcome and i think a lot of new trappers do is packing your dirt or your mud in this case down around your jaws of your trap. If a critter, a cat, but especially a coyote, if they step and they feel that trap at all, if it wiggles under them or anything, they're not, uh, they're not gonna commit to it. So pack that mud down in there so that that trap doesn't move whenever an animal is working that set. But you've also kind of got to be careful and not pack it too tight over the tops of your spring. So you pack it all around the jaws and uh, it's really just a matter of getting comfortable working around the trap and you will get caught every now and then. And it doesn't feel great, but it doesn't, it's not too bad, so. So this is my wax dirt. And once I've got my trap, my pan cover, my wax paper set over that, I pour that wax dirt and I put a pretty good little bit of it. And that's what the trap itself is actually covered with because that dirt, doesn't freeze even if it gets wet it doesn't really turn to mud and so the trap will fire really almost regardless of the conditions it, it's a little bit of a hassle to make that dirt but if you're trapping uh you know we're in kentucky um definitely here and anywhere farther south where your average winter is just really rainy and muddy it, it's almost a necessity in my book 
Ants always gets after me if the if the dirt doesn't look like the dirt around the rest of the trap. And then you take your sifter and just kind of camo it up a little bit. It's a lot easier, obviously, when your dirt's dry. So it's dug that way, and I'll just redo it. It's already still a pretty good hole. Really, no matter what you can, what you do, like you're not going to beat the nose of a coat. I've had them find these spots with a little bitty bit of bait in there, ten days after the fact. Like there's nothing you're going to do that's going to block that. But the big thing that I do, I don't want the smell of my bait getting on my trap. So I do change my gloves. I use one set of gloves when I'm handling my trap and setting it. And then when I get ready to do bait, I use these. And you can do it barehanded. You just that bait's not something you really want on your hands. So, what do you think, Ants? Wyoming relish or top dog? Hellfire. Well, Hellfire's the lure. We got plenty of lure, that bobcat. I think we'll put a little Wyoming relish on there. Go up here and get me a good little stick. Thank you, sir. Perfect. It doesn't take much. Probably there's enough down in there still. Um, and definitely, you know, a lot of times you'll put some lure or some fox pee or something around that, but having that bobcat in here all night and with this big catch circle, like that's all the scent that you're going to need. And so I just put just a little bit of lure. It's just something to hold their attention on that dirt hole right over the top of the, the trap. Put it on that stick and just slide it down in there where they can't get it out easily enough. That's good to go. So the barns where we've got all the coon traps set are right up there on top of that hill. So yeah, I think this bottoms right here looks like a pretty good, pretty good area to set a few. So what I do to, to hold my snare up, and like I say, I'm, I'm not a snare expert, don't claim to be, don't use them a whole lot, but we've got this fence to work with here. And obviously these crossings are pretty prominent, so you gotta, you gotta try anyway. So what I do is I, I, I fix me some wire up on the fence to actually act as my snare stand. And then I actually use my earth anchors, the same ones that I anchor my coat traps out with to, to anchor my snare off in the ground. So I'm gonna get this set up on here first. Got this little plastic stop here and there's your, your snare cable, obviously. They come through, it catches them. Um, and so I use this little bit of wire right here behind it, get my snare loop about where it needs to be, about the size of a basketball or a little bit smaller, about 10 inches. What you want is for a coyote to run his nose through there, but his shoulders catch the snare and, uh, and that gets him. So take that, wrap it around a couple times. And then you can just kind of use that to move your snare where it needs to be. So we got our bobcat this morning and in Kentucky, you've got to call uh, and, and check your bobcats in just like you do uh, a deer or a turkey. Um, and so uh, your fur bearer regulations from one state to the next are, are different, but typically bobcats and your river otters too uh, have a few more regulations around them. Like here in Kentucky, you can catch five bobcats per trapping license. I think with river otters, it's 10. But to be able to sell these species or take them out of state, you gotta have a CITES tag. And uh, these tags are, you know, they're free. You just gotta request them whenever they come in. But that's what these are. I've got a few other bobcats in the freezer. And so whenever I get ready to take them to the fur buyer or something, I'll have to put them in. And then to check in this bobcat from this morning, uh, I'll, I'll request another one of these tags. And that way they're, good and legal and ready to go so we'll get them called in you selected bobcat press one if this is correct if not press two pretty nice little fur definitely was not a big bobcat but not the smallest one i've ever caught either i was sure proud to see him this morning <laughs> bundle that up and uh, put it in the freezer got a load of them and then at the end of the year we'll get with a fur buyer and won't make much money off of it but we can make 50 bucks off everything combined it's a lot of money to an eight-year-old so that's what we do with them and 
give Zance hopefully a little, little work ethic he can learn along the way. When Ant started going hunting with us, I started just kind of recapping our events and things like that. And so I've um, kept a little journal for ants over the years. But when we started trapping, I started adding in, you know, each year whenever we'd start trapping. And this looks like pretty bare here in 2018 when we started trapping. But like if you flip over, um, let's see, last year we got a lot more tallies, you know, because we started getting better at it. We've never really given Ants the choice of, of what he wanted to do. Like on the weekends and stuff, we, we load up and we go, and I've been taking him out there with me. Uh, squirrel hunting, he was two years old in diapers, and I would carry him under one arm and, and, and just take him. I, I started learning to trap when Ants was pretty little, um, and, and he's been through that whole learning process along with me. You know, he remembers when, when we weren't any good at trapping, when we never caught, caught anything. I tell him, you gotta look like the ground near it so they step on it. Oh, you're welcome. Cold this morning, isn't it? Those frosty mornings when those coyotes are supposed to move. That's the paparazzi. You know what the paparazzi is? That's the people with video cameras that follow the TV stars around, taking pictures of them. Something sprung that one too. Something sprung that one. I think he drove. He told me yesterday that he uh, or this morning that he thought he drove over that one with his truck. Really cold. He's a pretty one too. Looks like he's caught pretty well. Good dirt hole set. Can't tell, we may have another one down there. So. This one's had it. Let's uh, let's go down there and check on these other two, and then we'll and then we'll clean up. But come on, dude. Did you? Is he dancing down there at the far end? All right, get in here. Uh uh, sit tight. I'm gonna. I don't know, it looks like that track's going that way, so we might have caught this one first and then caught the second one. But you look, that's a good catch. It's all the way behind the pad. Mm-hmm. And you're right, that is a male. Oh, pretty, pretty hefty coyote, isn't he? this set remade. Will you step back out of the kit circle a little bit? Oh. That's a 
nice, a nice coat. So this set is, this is your ideal coyote set. If you're on a place and that you've never trapped before and just coming in blind, the landowner told me that he was seeing a lot of coyotes in this field. And so got out here looking around, had all the snow and ice and I couldn't really see any sign, but I got a trail coming in this way, a trail coming in that way, trail coming in that way, kind of the spine of that ridge. I got nice open hardwoods here. And so it's just a hub or everything around kind of comes together and you just that's where you want to set your traps or in those spots where everything sort of comes together and you're just trying to help your odds of a coyote coming through if you've got your trap made right and you've got those good scents out they're going to come check it out so it's just got to be in a place where they're going to find it so just got done running our trap line for the second morning and got it out day before yesterday had had two pretty good mornings all things considered um the uh the weather made things tough to start with there was a lot of ice on the ground i was having to set traps through frozen mud which is always a pain i wasn't able to blend them in so you know kind of had the odds stacked against us and then besides that we were we were trapping a new farm that I'd, I'd never been on before until earlier this week but caught a nice cat yesterday and uh took ants out of school this morning he he skipped school to go run the line with us this morning and caught two nice coyotes this morning uh really caught a double it was a, is a male and female pair and you know, it's like I was saying, you know, I, I've come to really respect coyotes. I really appreciate them. They're, they're smart critters, but uh, you get a mated pair like that, um, they're pretty effective predators. They, they have no trouble bringing down a deer. You know, pretty much if you've got a game animal that, uh, that's out there, coyotes are going to prey on it. And the, the idea is not to get rid of all of them, but it's just to kind of keep them in check. And, uh, and so we, we caught two nice ones this morning. This female especially has got a really nice fur. I'm going to look forward to skinning her, having that tanned out. Might put it in Anse's uh, fur pile to sell for the end of the year. And got a whole week or so of running this line, and I bet we catch some more. <laughs>